Father God, thank we you. thank you once again for another thank opportunity to come together and to fellowship with one another. Thank you, Father, that we're able to have joy. Yes. We thank you yes. that it doesn't matter what's going on or what's happening around thank us. We have the joy of the Lord. And, the yes, joy, yes, and your joy, Father, is our strength. Yes, it is. And we thank you, Father. Thank you that as we study your word tonight, thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or divine spirit. Thank you, Father, that we decrease and you increase. All of you and none of us anoint our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our spirits to contain your word. And Father, I ask that you think through my mind you, and speak through my vocal cords all that you have me to say to these your sheep. And Father, you. we'll be ever so mindful to always give you oh. praise and always give you oh. praise. Oh. It's in Jesus' name and everyone in agreement say amen. 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 Praise Jesus. We're talking about God has already done. Yep. He's already been provided. And if we truly believe that, then our conversation, our prayer life ought to line up with, with that. That's right. Now, we're talking about the, the second, we're on the second teaching of this, and we're talking about we are already healed and prospered. Mm -hmm. yeah. we're, we're going to focus more on the healing side than, than the financial side. Because being Prosperous is not limited to just having money. Being prosperous is being whole. You're prosperous in your health. You're prosperous in your finances. You're prosperous in your relationship. You're prosperous in everything you do. And that's what God wants us. So that we can be used by him to draw others in. Are y'all okay with that? Mm -hmm. Alright. If you have the syllabuses, we're reading from, we're starting on the first page, <coughs> page five of it. And the first teaching, and, and the first point that we're going to talk about is healing and prosperity are part of the salvation package. Mm -hmm. It's a package deal. It came with the salvation. It came when you accepted Jesus. That's right. You don't have to pay nobody to get so that you can be healed. Some people on television say if you send a seed, you can receive healing. That's, <laughs> That's like paying for something you already got. Yeah. If you want to send a seed, that's wonderful. You can support the gospel, but you don't have to pay nobody to be healed. That's right. All right. Jesus paid the yeah. price yeah. already. Yeah. He already paid for my healing. Right. By his stripes, we were yeah. healed. Yeah. So therefore, we are healed. Now, yeah. amen. Yeah. All right. Because of Adam's disobedience, man was placed in a position of needing salvation. Mm -hmm. God's love for us motivated him to provide salvation through his son, Jesus. And we're going to John chapter 3, very familiar scripture. For we got to realize we already healed. You are not the sick trying to get well. You are the well trying to keep your health. Yes. And the enemy, I'm telling you, he's trying to destroy the believers. He's trying to, he's trying to deceive you into thinking that you are sick. He's trying to deceive you into thinking that you're poor. He's trying to deceive you into thinking that you are, 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 are controlled by a fearful spirit. But I'm here to tell you, you're not. You are, you are at peace. You are wealthy. The Bible says in the Old Testament, in Psalm 112 and 3, wealth and riches are in your house. Glory. If you are righteous, wealth and riches are in your house. Yeah. And Psalm 66 and 12 says, He has brought us out into a welfare place. Yes. Has brought us out. Yes. Past tense. That's Old Testament. Yeah. Under the Old Covenant. Yeah. So how much more under the New Covenant? Thank you, Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. The devil is a liar. Yes. He's good at uh, mimicking symptoms. He's good at trying to make you think that you are something that you're not. Amen. He's good at that. He's a good deceiver. Mm -hmm. But when you know, and you know that you know, mm -hmm. he can't deceive you. That's right. You know, as soon as, soon as he tries to attack you with those symptoms, rebuke him right then. Yes. Amen. Just like Jesus rebuked the wind, just like Jesus rebuked him when they tried to, when he tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness, rebuke him right then. Yeah. A lot of times we accept stuff, and he'll use people. To try to bring stuff in your life. He'll use people to tell you that you got something. Uh, or especially somebody that's close. Or even in the medical profession. He'll try to use them to tell you, you know, 
you got this disease and you got that and this is on you and this is going to happen to you. But it's up to you to stand up, stand your ground, even with it. See, a lot of times we think because they're doctors or nurses that we can't speak the word to them. You know, we have to accept their professional uh, uh, opinion. Or that's exactly what it is. But we don't. Cause I, I, I used this before because of my culture, because of my size. I was in a doctor's office and he told me I'm going to have diabetes, high blood pressure, and all that. I said, man, you crazy. No. I don't receive that. He That's said, but right. you, he was a foreign doctor, and he said, but you going, but, but you know, you're going to have all that. I'm not going to have nothing. All right. I told him just like that, so I'm not going to have nothing. I said, I'm healed. I am, I live in the supernatural. Right. All right. Now, this was probably, how long ago, about six, seven years ago, maybe longer than that. And I was supposed to have it within a three-year period. I don't take medication. I don't even take aspirins. Okay? Praise Why? Lord. Because I got the gospel of guts. <laughs> All right, now there's no pill that's stronger than the gospel. That's right. There's no side effects to the gospel. Nope. Yep. And the matter of fact, I, I take that back. There yeah. are side effects. Yes, yeah. good. When you read the gospel, you get joy. Yeah. 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 You get peace. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at here. <laughs> you get your faith build up. Oh, and you know what? I can't overdose on it. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the uh, side effects of the medicine that they give people now, they kill them. Yeah. You might as well so. deal with the symptoms. Because yeah. the, the side effects kill you could cause death. Yeah. Well, I just deal with the arthritis then. Because right? <laughs> <laughs> the medicine going to cause death, you know what I mean? Praise Jesus. You better stick with the gospel. Gospel, man. <laughs> Amen. Crazy. I'm, I'm having too much fun. With this. Yeah. But I'm telling you, man, this is this is how this is how you better view this thing. All right. All right. John chapter three, <coughs> verse sixteen and seventeen. If you have it, say I have it. I got it. It says, "For God so loved the world." Now, now, oh, I got to, I got to say this. Calvinism say that. Everything God predestined certain people to be saved, right? Here, the Bible says God so loved the world. The world, the world. The world is everybody. everybody. He didn't have just a certain people, a certain group of people that He said, "I'm gonna save and I'm not gonna save the other." You know what that would be? A respecter right. of person. Right. And He tells us not to be a respecter person, right. so He can't do. What he tell us not to do. That's right. He would be an unjust God. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw that in because mm -hmm. a lot of that is going around now. But God, well, God, God chose certain people because they look at the verse where it says that God predestined this. That's from a foreknowledge. From God knows all. Mm -hmm. God knows everybody that's going to be saved and who's not going to be saved. Right. But He didn't predestine just certain people. The Second Peter three and nine says that He doesn't want. Any, any to perish, but he wants all to come to repentance. Amen. Right. Amen. So if he predestined people, he wouldn't have put that in the Bible. That's right. Any who. Uh, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Say only. Only. The reason why I say that because it's a group out there saying that Satan is Jesus' brother. Uh -huh. And they had a fight to see who was. <laughs> they had a fight to see who was going to die for us and who was going to come and rule earth. <laughs> I'm laughing. Yeah. But that's a, that's, a, that's a serious teaching out there. <laughs> it says, oh, I got water now. <laughs> okay, calm down, dude. Calm down. You're having too much fun. Get serious. <clears throat> But God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And see, that's another one. Whoever is anybody. All it requires is just believing in him. All right? And it says you will have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. And that's another teaching. <laughs> They're saying that judge, God's judgment is on the earth. So God is judging. When we see all these 
catastrophes yeah. and different calamities and stuff happening. That's God's judgment. Well, we're under grace. Jesus came and we're under grace. And he didn't come to judge the world. Nope. I'm going to tell you something. When God's judgment starts, we, we won't be here. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be out of here. So we're not under judgment. Things are happening because of of, of, of the shifting of the earth and, mm -hmm. and, and, bad, and, and, and bad decisions. That's like with New Orleans. They had a city built, uh, had a dam built above the city. Duh. If it never went, the city going to flood out. <laughs> but, uh, but they say God did it. Yeah. But I heard a pastor say that uh, just like God didn't do the storm, send the storm to the disciples. He didn't send it to us. You know, why would Jesus get up and rebuke something that God did? Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus got up and rebuked the storm. He, right. he said, peace be still. If his daddy would have sent it, he said, I always please the daddy. I always do what my daddy told me to do. If the daddy would have sent it, Jesus would have put, instead of just a little <laughs> storm, he would have enhanced it. You know? <laughs> he would have turned it into a tidal wave yes, to help his daddy out. You know? All right. Y'all having too much fun. <laughs> but God, did, they say we don't go to have fun in church, so you got to get serious. Okay? <laughs> you got to get religious. But God did not send his son no, to the world <laughs> to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. saved. Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you need to you need to really thank Jesus every day for all every day. Oh, yeah. all day. I'm serious. All day long. Colossians chapter yep. 2, verse 7 in the Living Bible says that we're to thank him, be thankful for all that he's done thank for you. us. Mm -hmm. Everything that he's done for That's us. Right. Yes, Amen. What we do, we sit around and we whine, we moan, we complain mm -hmm. because we don't have certain things. Or we see other people with stuff that we want and we don't have. And we start murmuring, complaining. But I'm going to tell you, we need to just be happy. We need to thank God. Yes. First off, thank God that you're not going to hell. Yes. Yes. Second, thank God that you're alive. Because yes. as long as you're alive, there's always opportunity yes. to change yourself. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. But we need to be thankful to God instead of moaning and groaning. You know, that's what got the people in the wilderness destroyed. Yeah. All that murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. And when you're murmuring and complaining, what you're saying through your murmuring and complaining is that God ain't doing, ain't doing a good job. That God, God, you you are messed up. You didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. When your children murmur and complain about their situation, they're saying as parents, you're not doing a good job. Yeah. That's why we murmur and complain. And that's what we do. When we murmur and complain, we're telling God, you ain't doing a good job. And what happens is through our murmuring and complaining, we're compelled to try to do things our way. Our way. And all we do is just dig a bigger hole for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 All right. Back on the syllabus it says, first of all, as we can see in verse 16, that Jesus' mission was bound up in the love of God for us. Yes. And that's, that's, that, that's important that you know that. See, a lot of Christians, I'm going to talk about Christians, a lot of Christians accept negative circumstances in their lives because they don't understand the love of God. Right. See, they blame God for the things that are happening in their life, but that's not love. Love does not punish you. Love comforts you. Mm -hmm. God don't just have love. God is love. Mm -hmm. So only love can come from him. That's right. All right. And you got to know that he loves you. You got to know that. See, your faith in Christ is based on God's love. That's right. You are really saying, your faith is saying, do God love me enough that whatever I'm going through, I'll be delivered from? That's what your faith is saying. Do, do, do God love me enough to get me out of this? And the answer is yes. Because yes. he's already provided the answer for Amen. you to come out of. Amen. Yeah. All right? Amen. Y'all still with me? Amen. Right. Now, the word so used in, in the verse 16, in the context of how it is used, refers to extremely or very. Extremely or very. The Amplified Bible reads like this. For God so greatly yep. loved yep. and dearly prized the world. I like Glory that. Be to God. The Living Bible reads, For God <laughs> loved the world so much. Thank you. Jesus was emphasizing here the intensity or greatness of God's love for us. Yes. See, God, 
doesn't just you know like, like we casually say I love you. You know, we and and, 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 and and we mean it, we love, but the kind of love that God is talking about, we can't even come close to. It. You know why? Because I've talked to Christians and if you some I, <laughs> bless the heart. A lot of the seniors that I talk to Christians and I tell them I said, Well, you know, if Osama bin Laden was before he died, if he had a gave his life to Christ, he would have went to hell. You know they get upset by that. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because that love that God has passes our understanding. Mm -hmm. yep. People that we would, if, 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 if we had the power, if we had the authority, people that we would send to hell, God is helping in heaven. He sure would. Because you got people out there in the world right now, if it was left up to them, you go to hell. They don't like you. They'll send you right to hell. But thank God it's not in their hand. Thank God that he's put it in our hands. And he put it in our, he, 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 he left the decision, the choice, up to you and I. It's up to you whether or not you want to receive his love. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I like in, uh, I think it's 2 Thessalonians, matter of fact, turn, I'm going to show you something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to quote. I think it's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 9, or maybe 10. Where it talks about what keeps people out of heaven is, is, is the rejection of God's love. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, boy. Yep, second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2. Verse, we're going to read verse 9 and 10. If you have it, say I have it. I have it. It says, the coming of the lawless one, who is that talking about? The Antichrist, right? Mm -hmm. Is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish. Why are they perishing? Because they did not receive the love of the truth Jesus. that they might receive. Whoa. They rejected God's love. Yes, they did. People that are perishing, people that are going to hell, they rejected God's love. Isn't that awesome? It just, it just, God, God is, God is literally shoving His love on us. Yep. Glory be to God. Thank I like uh, Joseph Prince. If you ever see his commercials, of mm -hmm. when he's talking about Psalm twenty-three and six, goodness and mercy mm -hmm. shall follow you. Mm -hmm. He said the Hebrew word for that is goodness and mercy shall hunt you down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's hunting you down. God's goodness. His love is so powerful yeah. that his goodness is hunting you down. Yeah. That means that yeah. his goodness, yeah. everywhere you go, his goodness yeah. is running yeah. behind yeah. you. You ever seen an animal hunting another animal? Well, they be stalking them and coming up right. trying to catch up with them. That's what God's love doing with us. Yeah. Even yeah. when yeah. we're not having good days, even when we're not doing what we're supposed to That's do, right. God's love is hunting us down. Thank you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You know, the Bible Hallelujah. say when man stopped loving you, he said, I will adopt you. That's right. That's right. When, when your mom and daddy abandon you, I adopt you as yeah. a child. I take you as my child. That's right. Listen, if you don't have nobody in the, I know we need flesh to talk to sometimes, but you always got God. Always. He's always there with you. Thank him. you, Lord. I heard one pastor say, that's why when we, I think it was Bill once, because he said something like that. He said, when we pray, that's why we bow our heads, because God is right there. Right there. And we're talking to him. Right in there. We buy a right. to talk to him right in there. Right. He ain't so far off, but some people act like God way. Right. Right but he's right there. Right, right, there. right in your heart. Right. Anytime you want to talk to him, he's right there to listen. Glory Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how much he loved us. And 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 the love that he's showing for us way past the love that he's showing for the, them in the old in the old testament. Because he never he never moved on the inside of them. For he moved on the inside of us. That's right. In the New Testament. But he loved it in the Old Testament. But his love for us is even greater. Amen. Got a picture of me in his wallet. Woo! Oh, yeah. Lord, me too, me right too. beside my picture. So All don't right. think you got your wallet. Got a photo app. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you